Hey econ students, this is Jacob Clifford and welcome to ACDC Econ. So I'm in my office, I'm making videos. I was thinking it'd be fun to have a race. That's right, a race between you and me to find out if you can draw the key graphs of micro and macroeconomics as fast as I can. So grab your pencils and your papers and let's graph some stuff and let's see if you are faster than Mr. Clifford. Now before we jump into it, let's try something else that has nothing to do with economics at all. Let's try one of these, a uh, Rubik's Cube. See if you're faster than I am, okay? Now clearly I'm not particularly fast at this and that's kind of my point here. The fact that I'm slow doesn't mean I'm bad. I mean, if you think about it, I, it's still perfect, right? That's, that's perfect. That's exactly what it's supposed to look like. So I'm correct and I'm right and that's awesome. So it doesn't matter if I'm slow. This whole race thing is for fun. It's better to have a perfect graph than to be a sloppy graph that's wrong just because you're going super fast. When it comes to actually passing tests and doing well in your class, perfection is more important. Make sure, spend the time and the energy to draw the graph the right way, label it the right way. We're just having some fun and we're racing right now. So just like the rules with Rubik's Cube, we've got the same rules. You're going to start with a piece of paper. Your hands have to be down, so grab a pen, hands down, and when I say go, draw the graph as fast as you can, hands back down, pen back down down and then we'll stop the clock see if you can actually beat me. Uh, we're doing microeconomics in this session so I went and I wrote down uh, on these little slips of paper the key graphs that uh, you need to know. First one is a natural monopoly. Yes, a natural monopoly regulated at the socially optimal quantity. What? A natural monopoly regulated at the socially optimal quantity. That's the first one on our list. Pens down, hands down, all right, hands down so you're ready, on your mark, get set, go. Stop, that's it. So here we go. We've got demand, we've got marginal revenue. Notice that it's not horizontal because it's monopoly. Uh, the marginal cost hits the demand curve right here. That is socially optimal, quantity socially optimal. We're assuming this is a price ceiling. The price ceiling would be right there and that would cause it to produce a socially optimal quantity, which is right there. Now the reason that makes this a natural monopoly is because the ATC is still falling. And you'll see later when we draw a mono regular monopoly. I'll bring this back uh, and we'll see how you did. But there it is natural monopoly regulated socially optimal. How'd you do? Did you do good on that one? I don't know. We'll see. Maybe we'll go for an easier one because that was probably pretty tricky. Maybe you don't even know that graph because you're not there yet in class. So randomly pick, ah, perfectly competitive market and firm in the labor market. That's right. So labor market and firm hiring workers in that market. So two graphs side by side and we're talking about this idea of hiring workers. So not producing products. So you ready? In fact, I'll do it on the same uh, same paper as before. So I'll start. Uh, no, I can't. I don't want to start. I was gonna draw two side by side graphs to to show you what I'm doing, but that's not what we're gonna do. We're racing. We're racing. Here we go. Are you ready? Here we go. Side by side graphs. Perfect competition. Resource market and a firm. Make sure to show me the wage and the quantity for both the market and the firm. On your marks. Get set. Go. Let's do it. Here we go. We've got boom, boom. We've got the market. Spell it out. And the firm, we've got a wage, wage, quantity of labor, quantity of labor, down slope and demand, up and slope and supply, here's the wage equilibrium, here's the quantity equilibrium, da da da, taking over, this is the MRC, this is the MRP, and we hired out many workers, done, that is it. So the graph looks just like this. We've got a market demand supply setting a wage, and that wage is taken, not a very good line here, taken, I'll add a wage right here too, but it was already here, so I had it, I had it. Wage equals the MRC, MRP goes up and down, that's a P, trust me, there's the quantity of uh, hired, there it is. So this would be the quantity for the market and the quantity for an individual firm hiring workers. So there it is, another hard graph. Uh, this is in unit five, the way that I teach it, but uh, that's a tough graph. So let's try another one. You ready? Let's try this again. Let's try this again. Here we go. Randomly picking. Let's go with, uh, here we go. Perfect competition. Market graph with the firm showing profit. So side-by-side -side graphs again, except this time we're talking about perfect competition uh, 
for the product market, not the resource market, all right? Also, I think the firm making a profit. So we gotta have uh, a box of profit in there somewhere. Okay, here we go. Are you ready? So I kind of have this one labeled. Let me go back and label these. So in case you go back and watch this video, you know what I'm doing. Uh, this is the resource market we're doing here. And that's natural monopoly we already drew. So uh, here we go. Let me get my paper set down here. You versus me, perfect competition, side by side graphs, market and firm, firm making profit. On your mark, get set, go. Let's do it, here we go. We've got a market and a firm. Market and a firm. We've got a prices, we got some quantities. We've got demand, supply, price equilibrium, quantity equilibrium, take that price. Demand equals the marginal revenue. The marginal cost goes up. ATC is going to go down and up. We produce more marginals. Have to see, there's the quantity. And a bunch of profits over here and down. Stop. All right. How'd you do? How'd you do? Are you beating me? So take a look at the graph again. We've got price, quantity, demand, supply. There's a market setting this price. This price, which I'll add here again, taking over. Demand equals the marginal revenue. Produce MR equals MC. Quantity down here, down to the ATC and over. There it is. That's what the graph looks like. This is the product market. Product, product. Randomly picking over here. Let's go for a monopoly. All right, monopoly. Uh, regular monopoly, unregulated, non-price discriminating monopoly, uh, maximizing profit, so price and quantity, uh, wherever that might be. I'm gonna write up here monopoly, I'm not cheating. Monopoly, monopoly. All right, you ready? Here we go. This one you should know. This one's like one of the key graphs. You've gotta get, so here we go. Get your hands ready, hands down, on your mark. Get set, go. Let's do it. We've got a demand, quantity and price. We've got a demand. Marginal revenue, marginal cost, APC is gonna go down and up. You produce Ram Michaels MC, there's a quantity for monopoly, price over here for monopoly, and box of profit, which is stop. There it is. Now, I don't know, did it say it didn't say draw profit? I'm assuming so I added a box of profit in there too, but that's the graph that you need to draw right there. Uh, we've got a downward sloping demand, marginal revenue, produced where MR equals MC, price up to demand. That, my friends, is a monopoly. Now, let's go back to the other graph so you can see what a natural monopoly looks like and how they're different. Uh, right here, you can see demand, marginal revenue, the same, right? They both go down, demand, marginal revenue. Uh, the difference here, notice how, uh, where the marginal cost is right here, where that marginal cost hits demand, the ATC is going up. On this one, where the marginal cost hits the ATC is out here. In other words, the ATC is still going down at that quantity socially optimal. Again, that's called a natural monopoly. That's a regular monopoly over here on the left, okay? How you doing? Still having fun? I don't know if you are, but I'm having a blast, so I'm gonna keep going. So let's pack, uh, pick another one here. Let's go with random pickage, random pickage. Uh, here we go, monopolist competition, monopolist competitive. Uh, firm showing a uh, the idea of monopolist competition in the long run. So get ready for that graph. All right, here we go. Monopolist competition. In fact, I'll write up here. Mono comp. So here we go. Monopolist competition. Show me price and quantity. Show me what's happening in the long run. Get your hands ready. On your mark. Get set. Go. Let's do it. We've got a quantity, price, demand, marginal revenue, look exactly the same, marginal cost, produce, where MR equals MC, ATC is gonna go down, hit here, boom, ATC is over, done. How'd you do? Did you get it? So the trick on this one, if you look at the two graphs next to each other, they look really similar, right? We've got demand, marginal revenue, exactly the same, marginal cost the same, the only thing that's different is that ATC, that ATC, uh, goes down and hits what I call the sweet spot right there. That sweet spot is uh, where the ATC has to go because that's the only spot where the ATC is tangent to demand curve and that means they're breaking even. They're not making no economic profit. So the graph has to look that way. If you drew it like this, then that would be wrong because they're making profit in the long run. Monopolist competition doesn't make profit, doesn't make loss. It looks like that. That's the graph. All right, how you doing? You doing okay? Are you still having fun? Are you or are you like, dude, what a weirdo. Who is so into graphs that this is like something they actually enjoy? Like, I don't know, but I do, and I'm into it. So, here we go, random pick again. Negative 
externality, a negative externality. You gotta label, let's do the whole darn thing. Let's label negative externality with a uh, price and quantity socially optimal and then also add in a dead weight loss. You, a dead weight loss. So here we go, let's get the paper ready. Hands down, so let me write down negative externality. All right, on your marks, get set. Go, negative externality, you've got quantity and price. So we start the same. We've got a demand, we've got a supply, we've got a second curve. This is the marginal social cost, this is the marginal private cost, this is the marginal social benefit. This right here is the quantity socially optimal. There's the price socially optimal. And there's dead weight loss, dead weight loss is right here. And done. That's it. Notice uh, there is no shift. The curve did not shift. There's actually two different cost curves. The marginal private cost. Oh, you can't see it. Sorry, dudes. Uh, marginal private, let's do that over again. There's not two, there's no shift. So if you do a shift, you're doing it wrong. There's a marginal private cost and there's a marginal social cost that's higher because there's external cost to other people. There's also a marginal social benefit. Uh, the, you could have labeled if you wanted to the quantity perfect competition, right? Where normal equilibrium would be, would be here and here, perfect, perfect competition, but I didn't ask you to label that. That is a socially optimal because that's where the marginal social benefit hits the marginal social cost, which is right there. And since we're not producing that quantity socially optimal at perfect competition, there must be dead weight loss, and the dead weight loss is that triangle right there. That is a negative externality. There it is. All right, let's do this one more time just for fun. Um, I hope you are having fun. Uh, here we go, last one. Let's do just good old fashioned supply with uh, market, regular market, perfect competitive market, no firm, with uh, increase in supply. So if there's one graph you can beat me in, it's the classic graph that you should be able to draw, which is just a market with supply going up. All right, a shift in supply. Okay, here we go, you ready? On your mark, get set, go. Here we go, we've got a quantity, we've got a price, demand, supply, you gotta label that original equilibrium, ooh, equilibrium, price and equilibrium, supply shifts the right with an arrow, P1, Q1, and stop. That's it, there's time. All right, so again, I'm not sure if you're uh, seeing what I'm drawing here, but there it is, that's the graph we wanted. S to S1, QE, Q1, P to Q1. Now, like I said, keep in mind, it's not a question of speed. I'm just messing around this video. If you drew this on the AP test, if this is the graphs you drew, I'd be pretty angry if I'm grading it. I'm like, ah, these are pretty sloppy. Take the time and do it right and be perfect. You gotta be perfect. Hope you had some fun messing around with Mr. Clifford and uh, drawing some graphs. Uh, I had a blast. Let me know if you were able to beat me on any of the graphs by drawing them as fast as I could. And more importantly, let me know if your teacher was able to beat me, all right? So if they sat down and tried, were they able to draw the graphs as fast as I could? So hey, thank you so much for watching. Until next time.